viewers and welcome back to the South Bend Auto Channel. So we're starting out part three of the F-250. We've done the ball joints, we've made the mistake, we've corrected the mistake. And now we are at the point where we have to change the tie rod ends. We showed in the video, previous video, how this tie rod was shot. The left outer is extremely shot. Being that we have this side unhooked already, uh, I've been spraying it down with some croil since the ball joint job started. I don't know if it'll help. Probably not. It usually doesn't. But we'll give it a go. We'll loosen up the pinch bolt, see if we can get it to move. If we can't, we might have to heat it. Of course, the freaking air compressor always kicks on at the wrong time. But that's where we're at. I'm going to take and get this upper that goes on the knuckle. I'm just going to stick that back in and get it out of our way. For the time being. to make sure that pitch bolt is nice and loose and it is and like I said I've been spraying it down in the crack now I don't know if this side is right hand thread or not I believe the right side is I could be wrong oh my gosh that thing turns as easy as butter Out of it. Out of it. so I just wanted to grab the new one I wanted to see if it was right hand thread or not before we start twisting here. Let's see. Easiest way to tell is put your finger on it and spin it. And it is actually left hand thread. So there is our new one. It's gonna go in in this direction. Alright. So we will spin it like we're tightening it. And what we'll do is we'll just count the number of turns. It looks like we've got a ways to go uh, based on the threads. I'm very happy that this thing is turning. And I'm very sad that I didn't spray that side down with something <laughs> so we're just going to keep on trucking here spin it like you're trying to tighten it there's one turn and then i'm just going to keep going this is way too easy that's two turns i'm going to get something to stick in the end of it here well actually you know what this one's been changed before I'm not trying to make excuses there's three Five. Yeah, because remember this was a moog tie rod end, so this one's been done once. I think that one down there is original, perhaps. Uh, that's five. I'm going to keep turning until I get it out. There's 23. 25. 26. 27. Keep going with me, folks. There's 28. How many more threads we got? 29. Arms are getting tired. There's 30. And 31. And 32. 32, we'll call it. 32 or 33 ish. Either way, it gets us somewhat close. Kind of a unique design, very expensive they are. These were over $100. Uh, it does come with the little guide that holds. Once this is in, you stick it in the slot. Keeps it from rotating, so we're gonna loosen that up. Of course, we need to get a wrench. Perfect, more YouTubers calling. I think this is what, this is at least eight or nine that we've got for this video. Already, awesome. I think I pissed and moaned about it in the last video, so I won't do it in this one. Now there's, I think there's a little flat spot cut in this. We're gonna take, whoa, oh, ah, take the bolt right out of it. There is a machine spot in it. Oh, good. This guy's leaving a message. Can you call me back? Let's see. Gotta take and put a bunch of never sneeze in the hole. And then we'll do wipe it off our hands because we're gonna get it all over. We'll 
check this little guy back up on here so we don't lose it. We'll get it started and we'll screw it in 29 or 30 times. Right? We'll call it 29. Call it even. Now where is our slot? Our slot is on the bottom. So this will all go in this manner here. Get our slot lined up. Where are you? Like that. We'll get these snugged up even though, you know what, we won't snug it up right now. We'll probably stretch a tape measure and get the alignment or get the toe in somewhat close before we drive it to the alignment shop. I suppose prior to doing all this, uh, it would have been difficult on this one to take any kind of usable measurements as far as, you know, marking your tires, measuring it, and just, you know, setting it back where it was because these tie rod ends were so wasted uh, that I don't think you could do that with any degree of accuracy. So we'll take, we're just going to get this up on here. Make sure it starts in that taper. There it goes. We're going to get the bolt or the nut back on it. Uh, let's see, I don't have that size. We'll take, uh, we also have to put the grease fitting in it, which we have right here. And then we're going to have to get a new cotter key and stick back in there also. Not too overly difficult. I thought this was going to be a struggle. Now I say that and we haven't touched the other side yet. There's things can get real over there. Sometimes, man, you got to heat and beat and air hammer and swear and throw a fit. Then they come out. Long size. Get it started straight. I don't want to snap it off. A couple of Ugga Duggas. Maybe it's still plugged up with grease. There we go. That slot's gonna line up, so we'll get a new cotter key. Put that back together now. I'm just thinking before we do the other side, we do have to tighten this up, otherwise, what's gonna happen is we're gonna be fighting ourselves. So we'll snug that one up, and then we'll go over here. Get this cotter key out of here if we can. If not, it's not a big deal. We'll just you know, zip the nut up over it. But if you can get them out, it's always a little bit handier. There, that one's out. 21 is the flavor. is loose or the nuts off rather stick that back on there let me get a little hammer somewhere there's hammer 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 there we go That helps. Da, da, da. Hopefully the castle nuts not jammed on there now. It was a little bit, but not too bad. Alright. Where were we? I'm gonna catch it. We don't want to go damaging our new tie rod. My little stand here, it's seen better days. 
I think it's getting time to make a new one. It gets used and abused, like a lot of my tools. That sucker is loose. And being that the other side was left hand thread, we can only assume that this side is right hand thread. And we can only hope that it comes loose easily. Oh gosh, it does. Either a coil works really well, which I know it really doesn't, or these are just being very friendly to me. Now I know coil has a very cult-like following and guys just go insane over it. And I work on a lot of rusty crap. Like lots of rusty crap. That's three, right? And I've used a lot of different Panther P's. And I've never really said that, oh, this one's great, this one's bad, but I've often thought that none of them work really well as far as pre-seeping into the threads to make something come loose better. Now, that was slightly more reinforced after watching Project Farm do his little study and AVE and anybody else who's done it on YouTube. That really, none of them are much better than the others. Now I believe that once a fastener is broken loose, is that six? That some of them work better than others. We're gonna call that one seven. So I don't know, I'd like to know what your guys' thoughts are on it. I think that's number nine. I don't know. That's just my opinion. There it is. Drizzling out of the tube. And there's that tie rod end. It always amazes me. They make this thing out of some massive stock. And then you come down to the end, you still got the same little tie rod end they stick on the F-150s. I don't know. Whatever. Let's go get the new parts. Uh, yeah, I think the penetrating oil debate is... It's like the synthetic versus conventional versus every 3,000 miles versus once every couple of year debate, you know? You got the oil Nazis, the penetrating oil Nazis, the torque Nazis. Guess it takes all kinds to make the world around. Of course, I've never really met a guy in a shop who does this every day who's like really dead set, like, oh, you gotta have this. They're always just like, Psh, give me whatever. Now, perhaps that's because they do it every day and they know, like, eh, it's all the same. All right, so we'll spin this in 30 sometimes. You're going to want to be more precise if you're not doing alignment, but I would highly recommend that you get an alignment done. At least get the toe in set. Now on this car, because we did do ball joints, we're going to have to do the full shebang. Which whoever did the ball joint on this side did not look like they watched the SMA video. That camber bushing over here looks like it has seen better days. It looks like it's very beat up, like somebody tried to pull it out and busted all the ears off it. So that could turn into quite the fiasco. I don't think, ow, oh, you son of a hoo-ha. Right in the thinker. Ugh. I got no freaking hair either. I just shaved my head. Feels like it might be bleeding. What is that? That's plastic. That's not even the right size, you jerk. Just a smidge more, we'll be in. Uh, 
da, da, cotter pin time. No, this thing is not going to the moon. It's not a jet. It's not a helicopter. So we don't have to put the cotter pin in accordance with NASA laws. We'll put it in. We'll fold it down. I'll trim it off a smidge. It's not going anywhere, trust me. So what I want to do now is I want to make sure Oh, I put the tires on it. Yes, I did put the cotter pin in the other side. I want to get the alignment or the toe in. I keep calling alignment. I want to get the toe in close. Close enough that I can drive it two miles down the road. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to scribe a mark all the way around the tire. If it's on the ground, you can just like set a screwdriver. Screwdriver's not working well. Let me get a pick. Um, hold on. Set like a you know five gallon pail or jack stand or something on the ground so you can you know sometimes you take a little spray paint go all the way around the tire while the paint's wet you know scribe your mark this way here it's going to give us a reference to measure from try to hold it still and hope your mark lines back up usually I'll go around a couple times just to see make sure my mark stays lined up and it does so I've got myself a mark right here that goes all the way around the tire. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's, it's kind of faint. Let's zoom enhance. So the mark's right here, okay? And it goes all the way up and around, brings it around town. Now some guys will measure just toe in off a tread block, which I find is very inaccurate uh, because you have to go on the same block. It's much easier to go off this line that is scribed all the way around more precisely, I guess. Uh, not that it's a very precise way to do the toe in, but it's good enough to get you to the alignment shop. It's definitely closer than, you know, setting it by eye. So we'll do the same thing on this side. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't have to be in the center of the tire. It just has to be the same mark all the way around and line back up with your original mark. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Just make a new mark, which this one lines up. And see, we've got a scribe mark. Let's well, see now, see here, I'm about an eighth inch different. So, we'll just go like this, we'll dust it off. Yeah, I did actually make two marks right side by side. Let's see if I can hold it a little more precisely. If you get it so it just tickles it, usually you're good. There she goes. Yeah, she just tickled it. All right, so now we've got a mark scribed all the way around this tire. Now, some people get all kind of technical about it like oh you need a 30 second of toe in on each tire I'm going two miles down the road I'm just gonna make my measurement even and it, it doesn't matter what that measurement is we're gonna measure it here on the front side of the tire we're gonna take our tape measure go on the back side of the tire as near to the same height as we can now this has control arms on it so we can't you know so we might measure up here and then you know 180 across from that you know wherever we're gonna get the same measurement or very very close to it by adjusting the center tie rod and then I can drive to the alignment shop and I know once I get there, I'll have to make a very little adjustment to make it perfect. What I like to do, I'm gonna take a little paint marker and I'll put it right next to my line on the inside. So when Mrs. O helps me, she holds the tape measure in the same spot every time. And that's what's important is whoever you have to hold the tape measure, whether they hold it on the line or just behind the line, whatever they have to do has to be very repeatable. Otherwise, your measurements aren't gonna be that good. Um, so like I said, I'll just put a Put a white paint dot so she'll know what to measure from there of course i'll be reading the smart end of it with the numbers on it and then we'll go you know i'll go to that side i'll make myself a dot so i'm in the same spot and uh, of course what are the variables here well the variables are you're not measuring in the same spot every time and if your rim is bent let's say you've got a, a quarter inch of run out in your wheel well then your toe markings are redundant because you're measuring let's say both rims are bent and they happen to be bent on the inside you know, you're talking a half inch difference. So this is where alignment machines come in handy because they compensate for wheel runouts. where using this method doesn't unless we were to take the tire, measure from these spots, you know, roll it over, measure from those spots. It still has too many variables to be an accurate way to do it. Yes, it'll get you to the shop, but no, it shouldn't be left like this. Put it on the white dot, or not on the white dot, but on the line. You got it? Mm -hmm. So we're 68 and three quarters and a 64th, uh, let's see, no. We are 68 and three quarters right on the nose, so now we'll go measure on the inside. See what got in there? 
and inside here we are 68 and an eighth. So it's towed out. So what we need to do is adjust our tie rod end, which will crank it in. Now this one is right hand thread, so we'll turn it like we tighten it. So that's another YouTuber, just send that phone right out into the driveway. Apparently it wasn't. So that's loosen that one back up. Now it doesn't take a lot of turning to make big adjustments. So you can see we had it somewhat close, so we'll leave it there. As soon as Mrs. O gets off the phone, we will remeasure. Okay. Get that back on the dot. 68 and about 9 16ths. That's the Schmidt number. 68 9 16 we'll call it. And we are 68 and 3 8 7 16 So we got to go in just a schmidgen more. Try that. That is 68 and uh, 7 sixteenths. I think we might want too much. That's too much! You got twist in your tape measure. Can you untwist it? Why is it my tape measure? 68 and a 64th over 7 sixteenths. So we're, what, 128th of an inch toe in on each side. We're going to leave it. It's close enough. Good enough. Thanks, Mrs. O. You did a good job. So now that we have that settled, we'll take our clamps here and we will torque them back to spec. It's dark over here all of a sudden. We'll do that, we'll snug that up. We'll run this up. I should just leave the bolts right out of these because I might have to take them back out to do the alignment. But who knows, we could put it on the alignment machine, it could be dead on. I doubt it, but it could be. So we'll snug that up. And we will cruise right on down. Before I tighten that one up, let's just make it certain that this tie rod end is straight. Where are you? Oh, my napper delivery is going to be here any minute now. So I'm not going to be able to do the alignment today, but... Beautiful. Should have put a 90 degree grease fitting on this one. This is pretty tight to the wheel. I've got a 90 degree adapter that's going to get in there to get it, but it makes it a real pain in the neck. I guess that's it. We're done ski. A little rubber cap fell off my ball today. I have a feeling it's going to get ripped off at some point. All right, folks, that's that. I've got to keep motoring. Uh, ball joints, tie rod ends, three-parter on the F-250. I'm not going to be able to record the alignment on this uh, because I'm not going to do the alignment today. I'm probably going to come in really early tomorrow morning, like you know, 6 a.m. or something, go down to my brother's shop, bang it out so this guy can have his truck by 8 so he can get to work. Uh, plus, I don't think it would be super beneficial to show how to calculate which bushing you need in the top versus what's already in there. Uh, there is software on the alignment machine that actually does that for us, which is fantastic. Uh, there are, you can use the charts uh, that the manufacturers have uh, that come with them to calculate what you need as far as degrees of camber and caster change. But unless you have an alignment machine and you're doing that, it'd be kind of a silly video. So I'm going to skip that part. Other than that, we're going to set the toe and ship it down the road. I uh, did make the mistake on the ball joints. I owned up to it. That was completely my fault uh, way back in part one. And uh, hopefully we can all learn from that. Um, that's it. I got to keep moving. I got a lot to do. Check us around. Socials, Patreon, all that business. Go down there. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Find us around. I think I already said that, so we'll skip right to it. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.